steps goes, energy flows. So focus your energy on continuous learning and stop wasting time thinking about looking smart. Build resistance, build vulnerability, build courageousness, and face adversity with a smile. Become comfortable with uncomfortable. You know, the only person that you need to prove anything to is you. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. Stop wasting time and get on with it. Failure is part of learning, so start learning by taking action. Christian Lavolsi, it is Wednesday. We're here for the hot seat. What is happening in your world today? Nothing. <laughs> I doubt that very much. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still a calorie deficit, so I'm a grumpy, hung, grumpy, hangry person. Um, <laughs> no, no, I actually just had the most amazing um, introductory call with... Um, uh, a lady by the name of Christina, we'll just leave it there, who is a, a innovation um, superstar out of uh, Hunter Valley and uh, just got back from Spain. And someone, a friend of ours that's in, an acquaintance in common introduced us. And I, I just had the most incredible 30-minute conversation. Uh, Mark Randolph, uh, one of the founders of uh, Netflix, actually wrote the forward in her book. So Ooh. it was uh, really spectacular. So Christina, if you end up listening to this uh, big shout out to you. I'm looking forward to our phone call next week. So um, I always, you know, me, I love meeting new people and uh, <laughs> especially people that, you know, can kind of blow my mind. It, yes. uh, I find it very exciting. I know, I know. And it is so cool to talk to new people and to see the amazing work that some people are, are doing out there, which is absolutely fantastic. Now we're here for the hot seat. I've got three questions for you. Um, you know, we used to say you had two minutes to answer, but we very rarely stick to that. So we will try and cap this at half an hour. That's our goal. <laughs> and I want to kick off this week talking more so about marketing. We know this is something that is really pivotal in people's businesses and often an area that's somewhat neglected when you get busy doing all the tasks. So I wanted to ask you some questions on this today, Christian. And my first question today is, how do you adjust your marketing strategy in response to trends? And I'm thinking about those things that are just popping up all of a sudden that you're like, oh, that, that looks cool. Maybe I should try that. How do you well, go look, about that? Yeah, I mean, look, firstly, um, the only reason that you really need to adjust your marketing strategy in response to trends is to stay relevant and competitive, okay? Mm -hmm. But there is so much stuff out there that it's just a total waste of time. You know, yeah. if, if, if you're uh, targeting, you know, 65-year-old retire, retirees, um, there's no point in being on TikTok. So yeah. if, if, you, if, if your marketing manager comes to you and says, hey, you know, we're running a nursing facility, we should be on TikTok. Uh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, don't, don't let them go on a whim. Now, you know, some, a smart marketer will probably argue, well, you know, their children's children might be on there. And, hey, granddad, what about this? And, you know, maybe we can do great TikToks of how amazing our environment is, sure, right? Like, <laughs> but the amount of energy that you're going to invest and, the, you know, the ROI you're going to get, right? So, but what you need to do is the first step is to keep the pulse on your industry trends, mm -hmm. and consumer behaviors, and, and also the technological advances. Now, when I write strategy for people, you will know one of the, one of the, key areas that we focus on in our SWT is trends. So we yeah. identify six trends that we think um, are going to influence our strategy over the, the course of you know, five to 10 years in line with our BAG, which is normally 10 to 20 years. Um, and then we adjust that annually. Um, and, and so there's a mixed set of resources like industry reports, social media, customer feedback that will give you lots of insights. But tools like Google and social listening platforms, as well as market research, can provide really good real-time data uh, on what's gaining traction, but also what's going to create friction. The other thing is, not all trends are equal, and not all trends are worth following, like I said, you know, TikTok, depending yeah. on its relevancy. But does the trend align with your brand's values? That's really important, okay? Mm -hmm. And can it enhance your customer and user experience, or even offer you a new market opportunity, you know, a new blue ocean, so to speak? 
So that's where I kind of will start to adapt. Um, now, I always say this to marketers and to business owners and entrepreneurs that we work with. Before overhauling your marketing strategy, conduct small scale tests, right? Mm-hmm. To gauge uh, if a trend is effective, right? So for example, if there's a rising trend in using augmented reality, right, uh, for engagement, consider a pilot project with within a campaign before actually committing. So then use A-B testing uh, to compare results, okay, on your current strategy. Pretty simple. Wow. We do this all the time when we run ads and, and other bits and pieces. Um, when a tr- and, and this is a really cool thing. When um, a, a trend actually proves itself valuable, um, what you need to do is integrate it into your marketing strategy. Mm. But you've got to still be flexible because trends can evolve as, as well as fade. And your strategy should be agile enough to be able to adopt. Uh, sorry, to adopt, to be able to adapt, right? Yeah. Um, then what you've got to always do, and, 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 and you know I love continuous improvement, but continuously mm. monitor the performance of that trend-based initiative against the KPI. You know, so many people uh, will say to me, oh, Christian, go on and on and on about KPIs, and yet mm. your camera can't stay in focus, right? <laughs> it's such a nightmare. Stop it. There, you there go. we go. Um, I know, I know I need I need a little bit of fading out for all the wrinkles, but, you know, um, it, it, could be, it could be at a different time. So the other thing that I, I really encourage people to do is ensure that your entire team, including yourself, is up to date with the latest trends, but also understanding how effective they are to how effective and efficiently they are to be applied because mm. this means regular training workshops you know sharing trend reports because all of this can actually foster uh, a culture of continuous learning and innovation which is really really important in today's very competitive labor market so and and, and lastly out of all of those things the most important is listen to your customers allow them to guide you you know uh, Eric Reese in the lean startup <coughs> really uh, hammers this, you know, that you put out a product that's imperfect. Let your small sample of customers tell you what's wrong with it. They're going to mm-hmm. use it and break it in ways that you wouldn't, right? Yeah. Um, and so that that's really important. I mean, and that's what we did with Evolve, didn't we? We, we built this on our, our own framework. And mm-hmm. then we took all of that feedback from our, you know, first uh, 10 um, foundation yeah. members and yeah. worked through with them step by step what time would work better, uh, what the process would be. And we've come up with a product that is, I think, market dominating and competitor crushing. So, yeah. um, you know, um, and, I, and I'm a big fan of, 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 of both of those words and that's how I write strategies. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, the only way we developed that was by actually listening to uh, our customers. And, and then that's so important. So essentially, Simone, in concluding the answer to your question, like what we, people got to do is basically stay informed, be selective, um, mm-hmm. maintain flexibility and as always test and have to ta- adopt the test and learn approach, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because that will allow you to respond to trends as they happen. And also uh, it's about having a proactive stance, not only on the enhancements to your brand as well as the relevancy, but also uh, the drivers that drive growth through alignment and your audience's preferences. Yeah. Oh my There's God, a- I just realized I sounded really smart answering that question. I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, wow, hang on. I know a thing or two about marketing. I haven't, well, because I normally don't have the marketing conversations other than yeah. with clients. I, I don't think we've ever had a marketing um, kind of discussion on on, 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 on the hot seat. So um, it's know. funny how some of this stuff comes back to you when you just don't, you know, you don't <laughs> do it every single like minute every day. Yeah, when I reflect on that question and what I've done in my business in the past, I can see how I've literally dropped my whole strategy to chase something new and shiny and then be frustrated that it didn't work. Now, and small pivots, small pivots. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the second question. And my question is for you, Christian, is how do competitor actions shape your marketing decisions? Is this something you should really be looking at, like how your competitors are marketing and what they're doing? And do if you see someone doing something really well, do you follow it or do you, you know, make it into your own way? Look, that, you- that, that's a really tough question because there are. I have two schools of two schools of thought on this. <laughs> One, and I'm going to stay G-rated. Don't worry about what your competitors are doing. Be mm. the innovator, right? Um, 
I've done that and chasing blue oceans in my own ventures. And I'm pretty sure that most of those I failed at. Yeah. Okay. So when I, and I've probably got to do that, have a look and probably out, out of the 45 or so ventures that I call failures that didn't ever get off the ground. Uh, mm. And by the way, a venture is something that I've invested at least $25,000 of working capital into um, to try and seed it off the ground. Um, I would argue that most of those were, don't worry about your competition, create your own blue ocean and be an innovator. It, it takes a lot of work to be an innovator, right? Yeah. When I then look at the companies that I've succeeded, and that's probably how I'm going to answer this question, right? Mm -hmm. um, competitors' actions actually shape your marketing decisions because you've mm -hmm. got to be agile enough to move with them, right? And especially if you're the smaller player, they have an abundance of resources that you don't have. So mm -hmm. leverage them, right? You know, you if, you, if you've got smart marketing people, uh, like we have at Media Sociale, they'll be able to actually tell you what ads people are running, what demographic they're targeting, uh, even get as close to what budgets they're spending. Um, and so you know, you know, like there's no point in trying to compete. Like we've got competitors. Um, now I call them loosely competitors because they do the same thing that I do, and it's hard for our customers to distinguish, right, uh, our points of difference until they start to engage in our content and then they're like oh my god you guys are miles apart yeah no shit right mm -hmm. like you know it, and, and 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 you know and why are we miles apart because one our core competency is we deeply care about people way more than you care about yourself mm -hmm. and 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 you know and i always challenge people that is our biggest brand promise um so challenge us you know and come around we also guarantee all of our work right you know it's like love it or leave it you don't like it We'll even refund you money back in the first 14 days, right? Um, I don't do that for when I write strategies, only because mm -hmm. I know the strategies that I write are absolutely kick-ass and they're in such high demand that it's like, well, you want mm -hmm. it, you pay for it. Uh, if yeah. you fail to implement it, it's your problem. But mm -hmm. back to the question, I think what's really important is you've got to analyze your competitors' marketing strategies because it helps you identify industry benchmarks and standards, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is, again, if you want to be an entrepreneur, not an innovator, Okay. Uh, entrepreneur, yep. my definition is generally someone who can do something that someone's already done and do it better and find the blue yep. ocean in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, um, it, you know, for example, Netflix was an innovation, right? Mm -hmm. Streaming. But Blockbuster was an entrepreneurial venture because they took on the video game, DVD, sorry, the, the video tape, the, the VHS, beta, CD market, and they were the biggest out of it, right? Yeah. So, um, what it does is that what you need to do is by analyzing and benchmarking against industry standards, you allow yourself uh, to position your brand in the market, right? But also what you can do is then highlight your unique value propositions, right? So, you, you know, um, and that allows you to set yourself apart because if you don't know your competition, you can't actually make that distinguishing factor of what makes you different. The other thing yeah. is that competitor actions often reflect broader market trends. So, um, so she, and also the, the shifting consumer preferences, right? So by mm -hmm. observing those moves, you can actually anticipate market directions and also adapt your marketing strategies accordingly without having the gigantic budget of some of your competitors, right? Um, mm -hmm. So let's say you're a small independent paint supplier, if there are any around, and you're competing with Waddle, right? Waddle have you know external marketers, they've got internal marketing teams. You can't compete with that. Right, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're a mum and dad business, people that we love to work with in our customers on demand program, right? Uh, or you're a new coach and you're competing with even my budget, right? Um, you know, uh, I, I'm always fascinated with people uh, who who, who want to you know um, uh, compete against uh, you know uh, Kerwin Ray or Jack Delosa. I mean, those guys are super established, two three million followers, right? Well, yeah. Not Jack, but um, but Kerwin, because they got in early. Right when mm -hmm. the algorithms were easy, uh, but mate, you have a look at the advertising budgets that those guys are smashing out, right? Yeah. And they're investing heavily in their businesses, right? It, you know, and so I, I look at that, and and and, and you know, I I look at those and I admire those guys for for what they do and how. I mean, Aaron Sanzoni, I speak of very highly a lot. I've never had the privilege of meeting him, but I I always I always uh, look at some of his stuff because he's 
I think he and I are very similar. I only think his he's big background in sales, my background is growth and strategy. Um, but Aaron has done an amazing job being a business owner while actually coaching and advising other people to grow. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's an investor like I am. So I kind of see a lot of synergies, but man, there's no way I can compete with him. Mm. You know, he gets Naomi Simpson and, and uh, Janine Ellis to go and speak at free events with him. And, and people are lured by that. So I can't, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm aware that, that they're doing that, but I no. can't compete with yeah. that. So I've got to find other ways to be competitive. But if I, if I didn't know that he was doing it, then I couldn't uh, understand. But what I can do is work out who he's targeting, mm -hmm. right? And, and therefore I can go, okay, well, I'm not going to get into a price war with him because that's just a fucking downhole, you know, down a rabbit hole where you end up losing. But what yeah. you want to do is position yourself for the people that don't relate, right? Mm. And 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 you know and, and don't relate to others. So um, the other thing is observing the successes and failures of your competitors' marketing tactics can also inspire innovation within your own companies. I mean, I had this conversation with Bonnie uh, in our morning huddle this morning. I said, I want you today to go and have a look, you and your team, um, and I want you guys to uh, go and have a look at our top five competitors, and I want you to come back to me with a report on what they're spending, how they're spending, what keywords they're using, go for it. All right? mm -hmm. Now, if you're a small business, you're not going to have access to that. Yeah. Right? But you could join our mastermind, mm -hmm. and then you get access to the resources I have uh, mm -hmm. by simply asking the right question on the mastermind call that's going to be happening directly after this one. Right? Yeah. So, you know, but that is how we leverage... Um, our resources internally to help our customers win because yeah. our goal has got to be to make our customers win. And you know that that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing is competitor analysis should inform you. Okay. But not dictate you mm -hmm. in what your marketing strategy looks like. Okay. That's essentially what I'm trying to get yeah. at. And it's crucial to remain adaptable uh, using the competitor insights as, as one of your many inputs in guiding those marketing um, initiatives and decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, then there's other benefits like customer retention and acquisition. There is risk management around that. But the one that I'm, um, and I'm going to wrap up on this one to answer this question because I'm, I'm going on and on about it. It's just that I love this. I love this stuff, right? Uh, competitor actions provide you with valuable learning opportunities, right? They offer you those insights into what works and what doesn't work, right? Mm. Allowing you also to refine your marketing approach continuously. Like, let's use a good example. We launched COD. We tried to do events. We spent you know, 20 grand on doing live events. Yes, we're getting you know 200 people registering and whatnot, and then 25 would turn up. We yeah. hadn't learned the game. So then we started analyzing you know, Kerwin. He's the master of getting lots of people to a live event. Um, he gets you know, thousands. And then I realized that he's spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Right? And it's like, and holy that's shit. That's right? But also what he's done, he's built the most dynamic email list. Mm -hmm. By having all of these lead magnets that are going all year round, you know, and hats off to you, Cohen. I mean, I, I I look at that and go, smart, right? Yeah. Um, but then, how does he apply all of that to his coaching? Because yeah. all of his clients don't have those kind of budgets, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is where we then use our competitors and say, okay, well, how do we get smarter about tapping into one percent of those people? Mm -hmm. And so the tactics that we've developed are at grassroots. And, you know, some people still call them guerrilla, right? Guerrilla marketing. I'm a bit of a silverback, really. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my board head really does represent that. And there's a bit of silver there. Um, there's a lot of silver. Uh, but, look, competitor actions are a critical lens um, that, that, you know, you, people need to view in order to make better marketing decisions. But what they really do is just provide you with a central context. But mm -hmm. they also inspire you to to raise your standards. I know that that's what it does for me. And that's why I admire our competitors because I kind of go like you guys rock and I'm happy to talk about them all the time, you know, and that's just, that's the bigger guys. There's so many little people that I actually look up to that I go, you know what? You, you're, you're smaller than we are, but you're doing yeah. things really, really well. And I respect mm -hmm. that, you know? And, and I think that that's when you know, that's when you know your true worth and your value in, in your market. I mean, we've got lots of clients that, are business coaches that work with us in our in our customers on demand program, and people will say to me, "Aren't you worried they're just going to steal your shit?" I'm like, "No, I encourage them to. You know, I want them to be better than me. It's it, it's like in business if you if you employ people, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You want everyone else to be smarter. Now, yeah. you know, that's that's very competitive and it's very difficult 
um, when you have to be the smartest person in the room because that's what people are paying you to do. But yeah. then I surround myself with people that are smarter than me. If you have that mindset that there's enough clients for everyone and you're not in direct competition with people, then that allows you to feel comfortable that if a marketing agency wanted to come in and do our course, even though we're, we're teaching people fundamentals of marketing, um, that we're okay with that. We don't Absolutely. see threat yeah. or competition. I mean, hands down, if you've got the, the courage uh, to, to jump in, I mean, you know, I, I always get approached by agencies who... I want to sell me shit. And I'm just kind of like, you do know that I own a large marketing agency in Melbourne that services the global market, right? And they're like, oh. And I'm like, so you didn't even do the background information before you did the call. So they're the kind of people that I just go, no, because you're just mm. not doing the work. So I can't work with you. But when people come to me and they open and say, look, I know you own this kind of business, but I want to pitch to you. I'm like, sure, pitch to me. Right? If you've yeah. done that work and you know, then I'm cool with that. You know I mean? I think once we shopped King Kong, um, I really wanted to, to see what one of the sharks businesses was all about. And, yeah. uh, and we went and shopped them and I basically disclosed straight away. We, we own a marketing agency, blah, blah. And they went, we can't work with you. And I said, mm. what do you think you're going to teach me that I don't already know? And the guy goes, actually, no, we've just got a strict policy. We don't work with agencies. I said, okay, but I own five, six entities. Only one is an agency. So I oh, know, but you're related to an entity. And I just thought that's crazy especially when you're trying to charge $40,000 for mm. a freaking sales funnel, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, mate, what, are you cooked? I can't believe, and, and this is nothing against Savvy Subi, but it, I cannot believe that there are companies out there that will go and drop that kind of money when they can't afford it, right? Yeah. Now, if you're a big, big, big company, and, and that's what they're trying to pitch to, I guess, but they're not doing a great job if they're attracting people that aren't at that level. Now, you know, we could have dropped 40 grand on that campaign, but when I did the analysis, I'm like, you're going to do nothing that I already don't do, mm. but you want me to spend 10 times more on ads than I'm currently spending. And we know that the ad game, for anyone out there, the ad game is purely about money, right? If you get your right audience, then the rest of it is about money, okay? Yeah. It's, it's even if you're, you know, we have a thing called sell by direct message. It's one of the things that we teach in COD and it's a numbers game. If you have, you know, four conversations a day, you are not going to sell anything unless you get lucky, right? Because the, the law of averages on the internet is that you need to have 50 to 100 conversations in order to start closing deals, no matter where you are on the low ticket or high ticket spectrum, right? Mm. So um, these things are all factors. That, again, we learned that from our competition. We didn't learn that just from making our own mistakes. I have made plenty of those mistakes and burnt plenty of money. <laughs> Um, for the advantage of the people that we now coach. But ultimately, right, the, um, you know, you learn that from that competition. So there you go. That was an hour long response. <laughs> very lengthy, but ve very valuable at the same time. All right. One more question, and then we'll wrap this up. My third question for you, Christian, is how does your customer feedback impact your marketing plan? Is it even relevant? If you've got a client and they, and they suggest or give you some feedback, are they in the same place of in the market to, to even validate that? Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? What did we recently do? You know, you know me, I'm, I'm like the cheekiest operator on the planet. Um, and uh, and I, we basically sent out a survey to all of our uh, COD customers because we're refining our niche and avatar. And I said, hey, guys, and I, you know, I called it out. Hey, guys, I'm going to shop the crap out of you. You're already existing customers, but I need you to go back in your mind, reflectively, from when you signed up to COD and tell me why. And here are 10 questions. And that just went straight in and fed straight into our avatar and, and, and niche worksheets. And it's changed our ad campaign. It's made it more targeted. We're now pretty much getting only business people and entrepreneurs actually downloading um, the lead magnets that are out there and that's reduced the cost per lead I think by dollar thirty or dollar forty on average that's mm. huge right so yeah. to answer your question um, customer feedback is an invaluable asset in shaping and also refining your marketing plans all right because mm. it serves as a direct line of communication with your audience but also offers you insights that can like it did for us dramatically enhance your marketing effectiveness. Now, mm. some of the areas where you can get this customer feedback is around product improvements, right? As well as the opportunities for new product development. So 
what we do is we are constantly evolving. Like I said, in Evolve, um, you know, we, re, we have reshaped that program by getting customer feedback in terms of what time should we have our trainings. Like, so, for example, Customers On Demand are currently doing a training right now with Bonnie, right, on uh, SEO, okay? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they'll opt in, they'll jump in, they'll do that. And, um, and then, you know, our Evolve members have their Q&A straight away, like in, what, 12, 12 minutes or whatever. So we've got to wrap up. Um, and so the reality is we shaped all this because this is the feedback we got. Like even our um, and monthly game plans inside of Evolve, uh, they used to be at 10.30. Now they're at 12 o'clock. And instead of being two and a half, three hours, we have now condensed them to two. And why? Because we can get more impact. Why? How do we do that? Again, more feedback. Christian, you've got to create more structure because as you guys can tell, I speak fast, right? Mm. So what do we create? I created all these strategic forms, documents, so people can fill in the blanks and start getting their ideas down. But also it's about repetition. It's about revolutions. Yeah. So, you know, most of our members, well, out of the uh, 10 founders, what, there's eight, right? The, uh, no, 11, there's eight left. And then there's a whole bunch of new people. Um, mm. You know, we've got new people starting this month. We've got new people next month. We're a few more starting in June. Like, you know, this is how it's all kind of, and why? Because we're controlling that based on the feedback. You yeah. know, we're saying, okay, we don't want 15, 30, 40, you know, I think K2 has, you know, like 500 people. Mm. Right? Well, I'm not paying 60 grand to be getting advice from other business owners. I want advice from the kingpin, right? The person that's done it all, right? And so that's kind of, and that, that's what shapes us as an organization. And as we've identified, makes us incredibly unique, mm -hmm. right? So again, and that's because of the previous questions that we answered, but also the feedback, right? So all of this kind of great questions, Simone, these kind of really link back really nicely. So feedback um, also helps with personalization and targeting. That's kind of what I'm alluding to. Um, mm -hmm. It also is around brand perception and positioning. Okay, the, you know, we know what our pain points of our customers are. It is attracting uh, uh, leads. Well, they all think it's lead generation, but what the actual yep. fucking problem is, there goes my G rating, what the problem is, I get passionate about this, what the real problem is, if you're one of those people that's struggling for leads, you're not targeting the right audience. You're not yep. speaking to their pain point. You're not speaking to their pleasure, right, to their mm -hmm. desire. You're not solving their problem. So stop wasting all this money on ads and courses and just bloody call us. And I'll show you because we run an entire module and it's the first module. And how many people complain? They're like, man, that first module is the hardest thinking I've ever had to do. No shit. <laughs> right? Like, no shit. Right? Like, you know, I mean, we could literally just have that one module and nothing else. And that's where most people get their success from, correct? Yeah. You know? And and you know, and every time I hear, it, every time someone new comes in, like, my God, I never thought I was gonna finish module one. Mate, module one is forty five minutes. It's the two days of thinking you need to do afterwards. And how many times do we revisit it? And that, yeah. that's why I always wanted to create something because I learned that the hard way, you know, being really, you know, being really focused. I mean, I came from the restaurant industry originally and, you know, people just came to your door. All you had to do was produce really good food. But you know what? I've changed one of my restaurants from um, modern Italian to modern Australian thinking I was going to follow a freaking trend. Mm. And I almost destroyed that restaurant. Right? I just thought that I was arrogant. I thought so arrogant that I could fought, that I could I could change the world, right? Without consulting my customers, you imbecile, right? It cost me it cost me almost one point two million bucks. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think Simone, <clears throat> you know, it, it, feedback also gives you better content, right? Better communication strategies. It 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 allows you to understand those market trends before they occur. And how do you do all that? Well, you've got to measure and and, and you've got to measure all the analytics that come with it. But look, in essence, customer feedback <coughs> serves as both a compass and as well mm -hmm. as a catalyst for your marketing plan. Okay. So yeah. it, it directs the strategic focus towards what truly, truly matters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really important. Um, and 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 you enable your customers to be involved in your business, which builds, you know, loyalty. So there you have it. Yeah. Drop the mic. 
right? That's you know? absolutely a mic drop. And, and what an episode. I think um, anyone who's even watching this live is going to definitely need to watch the replay. And those watching the replay will be watching it again because there's so much wealth in those three answers that you just provided to those questions. You can take a lot out of that to learn from. So Christian Lavolsi, as always, thank you for your time, your insult, insights, your insult. My insults. <laughs> Well, someone might find something insulting in hey, there. Hey. You know what? I was I was listening to something the other day, and they said if you if if you if you raise your standards to a point mm. that no one else can compete with, um, you will always offend people, and that's a good thing. That's ten x. Yeah. Right. So, you know, don't 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 be scared if you offend people. I uh, I don't want to be everyone's friend. I don't have you know what's my saying? I don't have any any more space for more friends. Um, yep. And I'm already surrounded by the five people that I want to be spending most of my time with. Um, mm. So, you know, it, it, it comes down to, though, caring enough about people and growing. I and, mean, you know, our tribe get all the value in the world and we love them because they love us, right? There's you know, And there, there we go. Amanda McNeil, I chose you over Tony. Uh, it, just in case no one understands the reference, she's referring to Tony Robbins. And, uh, and we've got a few clients that have, have made statements like that. And, and that, to me, is... That's what I. That's what I get up every single day, and I'm inspired. You know, one of my clients, uh, Jamie Myerskoff, and his wife Jen, uh, have asked me to become godfather to their daughter uh, in Ireland. You know, and you know, uh, to me, they're the things that shape us as individuals. You know, yeah. when you're, when you're uh, you know, the Hawks family, I become an integral part of their, you know, large uh, manufacturing business. You know, they build some of the biggest bridges in Australia from a little country town. That's 160 kilometers out of Adelaide. And, you know, I get to be part of that family. Like there is just, you know, I'm going to get emotional. Uh, mm. I, I've been reflecting on this a lot because I think this is what makes you know us unique as individuals. Um, mm. You know, it's, 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 it's what we do. And, and I, I'm privileged and blessed that I get this opportunity every single day to shape people's lives. And I don't get it right all the time, you know, um, I'm 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 kind of that enigma, right? Like I can be quite polarizing. You can either love me or hate me, but mm. the reality of it is, don't judge a book by its cover, right? You you've got to allow it to get deeper. And 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 you know, my job is to be more corporate, is more socially and corporate responsible, because I I often get kind of caught up in the world that I live in for my tribe, and you know when I go out and give keynotes, I kind of forget that I'm talking to a brand new audience who may not understand me. And so this is what I'm referring to. Like, and this is where you've got to get that feedback. You've got to constantly be asking for feedback, whether it's for your marketing, whether it's for your product development, whether it's for you as a, as a human being, like your own prefer, personal and professional growth. Um, yeah. And so for anyone who hung around for the last few minutes of this, um, you know, and, and those who are regular listeners know, you always hang out for that last two minutes because Christian will go solo on you. Uh, but I know you want to wrap me up because you've got to get me onto the onto the mastermind call. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much uh, for hanging out with us. I really do value, Simone, your time. This was your idea, the business hot seat. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, I'm really glad we do it. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I know there's been huge demand to bring back the Top Achievers podcast. Uh, I've got about 15 people that are interested in, uh, in, in well, that I'm actually interested in interviewing. Um, but if people um, are watching us on uh, on all the live streams, please sign up to the Business Growth Mindset Podcast on Apple and Spotify because we are now sharing micro segments of really cool solo content again, which is how I started my podcast two years, three years ago. Uh, no, 2020. It was 20, 20, 2020, so it's four years ago. Um, and, uh, and I know that people used to get a lot of value and there's like my coffee break series, there's the Business Growth Secrets, which at the moment I'm studying, um, I'm reflecting on the Blue Ocean Strategy book. So this, it's, it's bite-sized, you know, like six minutes and uh, you can get your teeth stuck in it and hopefully it'll inspire you to go and buy their books like I did and, and then dive a bit deeper and, and it'll change your life. But anyway. 100%. Christian Lavolsi, let's wrap up this episode of The Hot Seat all about marketing strategies and the impacts on your competitors and customers. Thank you so much for your time and we'll be back. Working with Christian is a game changer. 
Hi, I'm Adrian Lee from GrowthLink Coaching and Consulting. I started working with Christian in August 2020 as his LinkedIn growth consultant. We worked together on his LinkedIn brand for about 12 months before becoming business partners in Growth Outsourced late 2021. Christian is a hidden genius. He helped me break through a significant financial target by restructuring my growth consulting online business offer. I don't know of any one person who can give you so much focus, clarity, and structure to live your purpose and get shit done. He holds you accountable to your words and gives you the tough love when you need it. I love his no BS approach to business and life. Everyone needs a Christian Lavolsi in their life. Do whatever you have to to work with Christian. This is just the beginning for us and I am super pumped to continue growing together. Thanks again, Christian.